continue with uh, section subpart D. Design and construction. Okay. So if you just brief, go to briefly the subpart D. We see first general. And then we see here control surfaces, control systems, landing gear, clothes and house, personnel and cargo accommodations, emergency provisions, ventilation and heating, pressurizations, fire protections, and miscellaneous. So when you see these topics, uh, this subpart D covers A-frame system. A-frame system which we have control surfaces, control systems, landing gear system, float and house, personnel and cargo accommodations, emergency provision, ditching, emergency, emergency exits, ventilation, heating, preservation and fire protection. So this is a, mostly the system in the aircraft. So other system you will see in subpart E, which is uh, more on engine, fuels, oil, uh, cooling, induction, exhaust, pipeline control, fire protection. So this is in uh, subpart uh, E, pipeline. And other system which is related to electrical will be in subpart F. So instruments, electrical system, light, uh, system safety, miscellaneous. So this is mostly cover the electrical avionics or aircraft. So the physical, uh, the mechanical uh, airframe system will be in the subpart D. Okay, let's look at uh, this briefly before we go to the next round where we will look at the whole uh, uh, one by one, especially the area of your interest. Okay, on subpart D, uh, we start with I'm waiting in the lobby. Okay. Okay. So you can see on the general. Uh, general will be more on materials. So this is the requirement where you need to justify your material and you have to select your material properly uh, based on your requirement of your design strength, uh, the durability of the material. Then fabrication methods, how you want to do the fabrication, cutting, drilling, bonding, welding, those, those are the requirement in 605. Fastness, all the rivets, all the bolts, screws, uh, in 607, protection of structure or the painting, coating, primary, primer, uh, those are in 609, Accessibility provision in the design of the aircraft, you have to design access for inspection uh, and then for accessibility to remove parts and component and also for the inspection, uh, you must have that provision. If happen to be you designing something, which you are unable to assess, your this design will be not will not be approved. Uh, most importantly, if you are doing the repair and you repair covering the area important for the inspection, the repair will not be approved. So this is under 611. So every time you do design, everything, every time you do repair, you must consider uh, compliant to 25611. Whatever your modification or repair on the aircraft, you will not cause a problem to the access to allow access accessibility for the maintenance personnel. Uh, Six one three material strength properties and material value. When you choose the material, you should know the material properties. Uh, it's not just choosing without understanding the material properties for the new material. If you are introduce new material or especially for composite, you have to do a lot of tests. To, to, the, to ensure you understand the property. Property, for example, young modulus, modulus of elasticity, uh, tensile stress, yield, bearing, shear, torsion, 
Uh, so those are the the uh, material you need to know. You have to know the strength. You got material properties, strength properties, and design values. Special factors and your design you have to put in factors, and there are factors for casting, factors for varying, factors for fitting. So those are uh, the structure requires special factor: casting, bearing, fitting. Casting, you know the process, which is uh, the grain will be uh, it is isometric, isometric type of material. The grain is everywhere. It does not have uh, the drain does not allow does not align to the the load applied. So casting has a problem in terms of uh, on in terms of reliability as well because casting uh, tend to have voids. And then the, the, there is some factor you need to apply when you use this kind of structure. Bearing, because uh, bearing, uh, there is a bearing strength. Uh, bearing is when you have some fitting, a hole, you have a fastener inside there, so those fitting will be subjected to bearing. So you have to put in the factor. Uh, there's also several conditions you need to consider when you do when you use uh, when you apply the very factor similarly with the fitting okay now six to nine is electro aero elastic stability requirement the structure is flexible it is uh, the flexibility uh, because uh, it cause it can cause flutter it's flexible it rotate it flex twist so the structure is not rigid and then we have to design to ensure that stability will not uh, match uh, the resonant frequency of the structure that will cause uh, structure to fail. They call it uh, uh, flutter. flutter. Okay, both strike damage, every structure will be designed to sustain a certain bird uh, uh, strike uh, I think seven point of birds. So normally this one is not been done by analysis. So the bird, bird strike damage will be done through test. So they shoot birds into the aircraft structure, into the windshield, into the radome, and to ensure the radome, the structure will not fail under that, uh, under the under the bird strike. So this is gender. So gender will be talking about material, fastness, Accessibility to the structure, material strength property, and when you design fitting, bearing, and you use casting method, then you have to have some factor, and they're also talking about a flutter and bird strike damage. So, this is what we have in, in general. And then next, we move to control system. I think I go to control system, we go to control surfaces because control system must have control surfaces or control surfaces must have control system, so it both. So we have control surfaces, we have the uh, aileron, we have labron, we have elevators, we have rudders, uh, we have trim probably, we have uh, speed brake, speed brake is not control system. So we have aileron, we have rudder, we have elevator. Mm. And uh, some big aircraft, they use flap, flap run, flap aileron. They use, don't use aileron a lot, but they use Lebron. So one of the unique aircraft with Lebron is a, a 737. And that's the one that we found in uh, Ireland, uh, which uh, basically is very significant finding. That finding uh, determine where the aircraft and what happened to the aircraft so on the 777. I was part of the team doing the uh, accident investigation on 370. So that is flapron. Flapron is a flap uh, and also aileron. You mean it can go down and also it can asymmetrically go down. So to, to roll the aircraft. Why we have that? Because if you use a lot of aileron, you may get into the problem of aileron reversal. Aileron reversal, in order to prevent to understand aileron reversal, then you have to go back to the, uh, you have to go to the uh, aeroelasticity again. Okay. Yeah, aeroelasticity, uh, stability requirement. So we have control services, then control services, we have to ensure the control services are strong. You have to 
analyze, you have to test to ensure the uh, control surfaces able to carry the load. All the load uh, determined by flight test. Uh, that's why most of the program begin with the flight test and the flight test is used to determine it. All the A load determined by flight test. It can be done by calculation, but uh, to be accurate, they will do the flight test. So it was very unique. I had I was in Seattle one time and I mm. saw this one. I think seven to seven. Uh, they have uh, they have mounted a wing on the nose of seven seven to seven and the fluid and then they get all the wing load data from that flight. Mm. So that's how they measure. Uh, for example, I was working with the Eagle. We got the load by we did a simple aircraft. We built from uh, plywood as the frame, and then we use uh, fiberglass as a shell, fuselage structure. When we fly the aircraft. We call it a proof of concept aircraft. So we get all the alert from the proof of concept aircraft flying. All the worst uh, for small flight. Uh, for example, when we did design the flaps for the Eagle. And we design, we build the flaps, and we tested by by hooking, by mounting the the flaps on the on the pickup truck, and we drive around the runway with the speed uh, which we consider the aircraft will be flying. So we get all the load data from that kind of activity. So the load data is uh, load of the load data, especially the A load, will be determined by the flying or by the activity, which is uh, uh, actual activity is not by analysis alone. Okay. You see maybe wind tunnel test. Yes, wind tunnel can drive, drive turn load, but there are a lot of parameters, a lot of assumption when you do when you use a wind tunnel. Especially we also do have problem like Renault number. So we have to have the right uh, factor for you for us to get the load information from wind tunnel test. So control system, when we have the control system, okay, installation proof of strength, installation and hinges. Uh, it's very important for the control system to have the hinges and we do not want the hinges to fail. So the hinges is also uh, being uh, designed and analyzed to be able to carry the load. And then we have a control system, the whole control system. Uh, and we have uh, 672 stability augmentation, automatic and power property system, control system stop, Control system trim, control system gas lock, prevent the gas from hitting the control services and operate the control services, may damage it, limit load static, operational test of the whole system, of the three or four control system, three control system, control system detail, you have to get the detail, you have to get the drawing, you have to, you have, you have to design the actuator, the bell crank, the pulley, the cable, if you are using the conventional design, we have this cable system, joints, and lift and drag devices, lift and drag device indicator, uh, flaps and slack interconnect. So flap and slack also work together to be efficient. So then take off warning system. So this is a complete control system. So what I'm trying to just to highlight to you, 672. 672 is the provision taken by 3737 max uh, where they have putting this uh, stability augmentation automatic power operating system if you're not able to control the aircraft manually its provision is given there is nothing wrong with design only i believe the the way how they operate uh, mm -hmm. is a problem after control system we talk about landing gear this is a complete complete landing gear General uh, short absorption, detection mechanism, wheel, tires, brake, and ski. Some aircraft were landing, operating in the north or south pole. They have been fitted with the ski, so they will be able to land and take off from the snow or ice, compacted ice. So those area, the airfield is a compact ice. So the standing gear system and then hull, hull if you if you're amphibian, if you're amphibian or if you are float system, there are some aircraft with amphibian aircraft, amphibian aircraft with the fuselage, 
lower half of the fuselage is a boat design. Uh, for float, you aircraft uh, landing gear replaced with uh, some some float, so keep the uh, aircraft uh, on the water. So uh, we don't really see big aircraft with the float, but we obviously uh, we always see the aircraft, the amphibian aircraft. We also have, I think, two amphibian aircraft which is used for the firefighting, the bomber. Mm. So, so uh, then we go to personnel, personnel and cargo accommodation. So this is where your area, your cabin interior, and for the structure, this is where your focus area. Uh, there is area for there is requirement for pilot compartment, pilot compartment doors. So you have to have the doors to protect the crew from intrusion. Pilot compartment view. The pilot sit in the cab uh, cockpit should be able to have the view clear view, and there are uh, first percentage of view, how many percent of view view we can see uh, from the cockpit. Windshield and window, design windshield and window, for example, windshield demister, demister or something is inside this window in windshield and window. Copy control, all the control column, all the control stick, all the pedals under the copy control. Motion effect, uh, copy control. Control, copy, knobs and shape. So if the, you see the aircraft, you can see the specific uh, knobs specific shape those are not just they like to do it because there is already requirement this requirement for the size the look of the knobs and the design of the knobs first slash door this is a door door design requirement seats bus safety belt and harness you're dealing with seat seat belt you go to 75 it will explain in detail what kind of seat how many uh, what are the acceptable seats and how they requirement to design the seat and how to, to design the installation and the seat on the aircraft. Storage compartment, storage and compartment 787. And that's why we have this when you have storage. Maybe if you see the cabin overhead luggage and you can see the weight limit there, uh, those are being designed to 787. You have to determine uh, the limit, a level limit for that kind of uh, compartment. Retention of mass in the passenger and crew compartment and galley. Uh, that's why if you design something, you can't let it loose because during this uh, heavy turbulent or land, heavy turbulent or uh, landings, you have to have items secure in place. Because 789 say no item or mess can fly around and hit people, and injure people. 789. So that's why, uh, for example, you may see uh, uh, this year we become very fussy on the simple installation in the cabin. Because that is a requirement, they, you have to comply to 789. Mm. Uh, you may question, how about handphone? How about your personal item? Yeah. Uh, with the same mess, it may injure the person. Yes, true. But it's not mean to be openly uh, put outside. Okay. Okay. So that's why we, we don't question the handphone to be uh, uh, secured or something. I think that is easily secured. However, for like a uh, flower base, uh, something which is uh, loose and you have to really remove and uh, secure it before takeoff and landing. And especially during heavy, during turbulence or heavy weather. So, retention mass. Then, passenger information, signal and placard. So, placard, passenger information mandatory under 791. If your placard is blurry, you don't have the placard, then it become non compliant that the aircraft is not airworthy. So 791 is important. I, I think most of your job basically also go around 791. Floor surfaces. Uh, floor surfaces is what the issue of slippery. So you have to, you need to prevent it uh, from slippery floor because you need to reduce the injury of the people. Security consideration. So this is about the personal and cargo accommodation. Basically it's used to ensure the passenger, the, the the passenger, the crew are safe in the cabin. Then emergency provision, emergency provision. There is ditching. There is emergency evacuation, emergency exit, emergency exit arrangement, uh, emergency egress, emergency exit marking, lighting, exit access, with us. Maximum number seat abreast, lower deck service, and level three doors. So this is mandatory requirement, and basic uh, most of it uh, showing compliant by by test. 
Hmm. For example, uh, emergency evacuation, you need to get all the passengers out in 90 seconds. So what they did, for example, for the Airbus, they put the aircraft in the hangar, turn off all the light, load the aircraft with 600 people, and and uh, deploy the emergency situation. So everybody must escape the aircraft in 90 seconds, which Airbus uh, A380 did it in 70 seconds, 70 something seconds. So hmm. that's evacuation. Ventilation and heating, this is common thing, ventilation, heating, uh, pressurized cabin, uh, test for pressurized cabin is there is uh, 8.1843 and uh, 851 to 869 is about fire protection. How do you want to install the fire protection, how the fire protection should function and how efficient should it be. So under 851 to 869. Yes. Okay. And we are also always caught into the uh, 85853. Yeah, compartment interior. So everything that you do, everything you install must comply with 25853. Miscellaneous is about leveling, how to level the aircraft. If you have a propeller aircraft, you have to reinforce near the propeller. And also when you you have to have proper bonding and protection and against static electricity, there are some aircraft basically exploded. When there is no proper bonding, electrical bonding, it cause fire, ignite the what uh, the fuel vapor in the fuel tank and it can cause explosion. So that's why now they introduced 25899 regarding mm -hmm. electrical bonding and protection. And then we have uh, power plant, 